All right, folks, my name is Mr. Atkins, and I teach third grade at Plainview School, where I teach reading. And for the next five weeks, every Monday, I'm going to be teaching you a reading lesson. And so it's important every day for you to know what it is we're going to be working on. So today, take a second and read yourself what our learning outcome is. Okay, now read this with me. Read accurately and fluently. Now, it's important if you're going to do those things that you know exactly what they mean. So if you look at this word accurately, we can circle the L-Y. That's a suffix that means in a way. So we're going to read in an accurate way. Accurate just means correct. That means we're going to read the words correctly. We're going to get them right. And fluently, you have your L-Y ending again, which means in a way, in a way that is fluent. And I hope you've heard this word before, but in case you haven't, let me tell you what fluent reading means. Fluent reading means you don't read too fast and you don't read too slowly. You read just like you were talking to a person. If you've ever watched a documentary on TV and you see someone who is talking about what's happening on the screen and they talk in a normal voice, in a normal pace, in a normal tone, that's what fluent reading means. Now, a lot of times I have seen people when they don't know a word, they just guess it or maybe they kind of mumble it so the teacher will think that they know the word, but that doesn't work, folks. Or, and this is probably the worst thing of all to do, they just skip it and they think, oh, it's just one word. It doesn't make a difference. I want to show you something and we'll see if one word can make a difference. I'd like for you to read this sentence to yourself. Now read it with me. Sally sat on the we're going to pretend that we didn't know that last word, so we just skipped it. Well, does that hurt our comprehension? Absolutely. We don't know if she's sitting on a snake, if she's sitting on a couch, if she's sitting on a car, or if she's sitting on the moon. We have no idea because we did not know that last word. Let's look at another sentence. Read this to yourself. Read it with me. She saw a big, what? We don't know, we just skipped the word. Maybe she saw a big snake, maybe she saw a big house, maybe she saw a big person, maybe she saw a big cloud. When you know all the words in a sentence and read them accurately, Sally sat on the bench. She saw a big rhino. Now you know what she's sitting on and what she sees. You can probably also infer or figure out where she is. We know if she's sitting on a bench, she might be at some place like a park. But I know you don't usually see rhinos at parks unless maybe it's a statue. I know you see rhinos at zoos. And I know you can also have benches at zoos. So I can infer that Sally is at a zoo. But if I skip those words because I don't know them, I'm in trouble. I won't understand what I've read. So you may be wondering, well, then what do I do when I come to a word I don't know? If I can't skip it, if I can't just mumble it, what in the world do I do? Well, when we come to an unknown word, we break it apart. That's called decoding. And then we put it all back together and read it correctly. And that's called recoding. So when we break it apart, it is called what? Decoding. When we put it together, it's called recoding. And the way that we break it apart is we look for parts that we know. So take a second and look at these four words. Look for parts that you know at the beginning, parts that you know in the middle, or parts that you know at the end.
look at this first sentence, this first word, excuse me. I know a part immediately. At the very beginning, I see the word for. At the end, I see er, and I know that that says er. In the middle, I have a vowel and a consonant. And I know that when a vowel has a consonant right after it, it's usually going to be a short vowel. So let's try these parts. For ev er. For ev er. Forever. Now you may be saying, Mr. Atkins, I know that word. That was an easy one. And you're right, it was. But all words are not that way. So let's keep practicing. Look at this one with me. Looking at the end, I see an ed ending. Looking at the beginning, I see a prefix miss. Tr is a blend. Tr, miss tr, and here we see a word eat. Miss treated. Miss treated. Miss treated. Try the same thing with this word. I hope that you noticed the ED ending here. And I'm sure you saw the TH in the middle. If I have a vowel followed by a consonant, I know it's going to be, what did we say, long or short usually? Short. Get add. Here is my ER, just like I had up here. Get add. Erd. Gathered. Gathered. One more word for us. Look at this one. See if you see parts that you know. Break it apart. Decode it. And then put it back together. Recode it to read it with us. Sure, you notice the ly ending, just like we have in these two words. And although we didn't talk about this, I bet a lot of you know when you have two consonants that are the same, a double consonant, you can split it between the two. Usually, you're only going to have one sound from these two consonants. We have a with a consonant after it. So, is this vowel probably going to be long? or short, probably short. Here's another vowel with a consonant. So is this vowel probably going to be long or short? Probably short. Another vowel, consonant right after it. So my vowel will be short. Now, Look at this one. I have a vowel and I have a consonant right after it, but I also have this letter right here, which you've probably heard called sneaky E. And usually it will make the vowel here say its name. So I'm going to put a mark over it to remind us it's long. I have a P and an R, so I know those are probably going to blend. This is a long word, but let's see if we can read it. App, approx, approximately, approx, approximately, approximately, approximately. Did you notice when I sound the word out, I didn't get it exactly right, but I got close enough that it reminded me of a word that I did know, and I figured out that approximately is probably the word approximately. Let me show you another example of how that works. Now this is a word that I'm sure you know and have seen a lot. However, let's pretend that we don't know it. We could very easily say, oh look, two words that I know, wag and on, wag on, wag on, wag on. That 
that's not exactly correct, but I get close enough when I pronounce it that way that I know this word. Wag on is wagon. So, when we come to a word that we don't know, we don't skip it, we don't guess it, and we don't just mumble it. We decode the word, break it into parts, put all the parts back together, and then recode and read the word correctly. Also, as part of today's assignment, I'm going to have a Google Slides presentation for you to go through and practice sounding out and reading some other unknown, unknown words. Then I will have a short passage for you to read. And as you read it, if you can print it off, that is awesome. If you can't print it off, just get a blank sheet of paper and write down any words that you don't know. Then do what we've done, breaking them apart, putting them back together, and reading them fluently. Hope you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, um, feel free to email me. My email address is P-E-A-D-K-I-N-S at decab, D-E-K-A-L-B, K-1-2 dot org. I'll see you guys next week. We'll practice reading some more. Thanks, guys. Bye.